Could this cheap survival kit that I bought on Amazon save your life? Well, let's find out. I admit, I wasn't expecting much from this kit when I bought it in a lightning deal for $32 on Amazon. I mean, after all, my multi-tool cost more than that in my EDC kit. But it had a 4.5 rating from over 600 people, so I was intrigued. And maybe this would make a great Christmas gift. So let me show you the ad here. It is a 235 piece emergency survival kit and first aid kit, professional survival gear tool. And it has IFAC Molly system. Now, this is the part that kind of bothered me. It's a gift for men camping outdoor, adventure, boat hunting, hiking, and earthquake. Hmm, I guess women never go hiking. We never go camping. We never experienced an earthquake. Hmm? The ad said that this kit was designed by American veterans, but by the way things are written, I know it was definitely made in China. Well, let's open it up. I have not opened it up before. Let's take this off. See what's inside. Okay, so this side has the first aid kit and a nice little bag. We'll see what's in there. And then here's the side with other contents. So I'm going to unpack the items in here, put them in different survival categories, and let's see what we got. First, let's look at the pouch itself. I, I thought it was nice that it came with these. You know, you can buy them separately, add your own, but it's got the first aid one and the American flag. I thought that was pretty nice. But if you didn't like that, you could take them off and add whatever patch you'd like. And as for the zippers, I think they're pretty good. Yep, no real problem there. And you can see you got your Molly. And on your back. So, okay, let's look inside. So it's kind of a clamshell. On this side, you have a pouch with pockets. And on this side, you also have a pouch. It states that this is made of military grade 1000D nylon, which is water resistant. And it measures eight inch by six and a half inch by six inch. My first observation when it's full is it's pretty heavy. It weighs almost four pounds. I do like the red color, but it also comes in black and camouflage. And actually, it's a cheaper price for those two colors compared to the red. Okay, now let's look at the contents. First up, shelter is one of the first things you should consider in a survival situation. So for shelter, we have the emergency rescue blanket and an adult rain poncho, pretty flimsy. And then this tool, this ax tool, which I'll go into in more detail, but it could help craft a shelter. If there's room in the kit, I would suggest sticking in a heavy duty contractor bag. That can be great for helping you make a shelter, keeping you warm, stuffing with leaves, whatever, or carrying things. So this is something to think of to add to your bag. Next up, fire can be very important if it's a cold climate that you are trying to survive in. And just think of the book by Cody Lunding, which was 98.6 degrees, the art of keeping your ass alive. So you've got to be careful about hyperthermia or hypothermia. So for fire, we have these four fire starter kind of cordage fire starter. And then of course a ferro rod. Let's see how it does. Wow. It had a coating on it, I guess. There we go. Okay. It works, but I would definitely think about adding very inexpensive item, a Bic lighter. I think this really makes sense. You know, you can't go wrong with a Bic. A little bit easier than a ferro rod in an emergency. Something else I might add to the fire kit, which takes up no room at all, right? 
is a frenzel lens. This can also help start a fire. And like I said, it doesn't take up any room. Water. We all know that that is extremely, extremely important. Okay, for water, we do have this, right? You can find water if you can fill it up. And then this is kind of neat. It is to strap a water bottle on your belt or whatever else you might have. And then we're gonna put it on good. And then you can snap this on your belt. And you can carry it. Kind of clever. So you could get water, but is it potable? Is it what you can drink? I would suggest adding something for water purification like this or tablets or a life straw, an individual life straw. All good additions. And how about light? I mean, who's afraid of the dark? Well, I can be depending on the situation. So for light, it came with two glow sticks and a flashlight, which when I tried to turn it on, nothing happened, right? Well, that is because it needs batteries. So we'll test it out when we get batteries. And it's a good idea to always carry spare batteries with you. And as far as the flashlight goes, it takes a double A battery, I found. So yeah, it's pretty bright. I think it only has one setting. Not bad. But I would recommend having an extra double A battery in your kit. Next up, food, which depending on the length of survival, isn't that important. Uh, I went three days fasting with only water or broth and I was fine and I have good energy during that time. But if it's gonna be a lengthy period, you gotta eat. Now it didn't come with any actual food, but it does have this neat, neat little spork, right? And a little fishing kit. It has two baits, two hooks, two swivels, two weights, two floats, and a little bit of fishing line. Now, if you're really worried about food, you might want to attach this to the outside or a couple of these. These are 400 calories a piece, I believe. Yes, they're 400 calories a piece. And you could put a couple in through the Molly straps or figure out some way to keep them in the kit if having a couple food bars is important to you. Medical first aid can be very, very important for survival. So it came with this first aid kit these two gloves, and a little basic first aid instructions, which I thought was a neat idea. It has various instructions in it. So I was impressed that it came with this. Let's see what's in here. I haven't opened it up yet. Okay. A lot of safety pins. This is probably for the triangular bandage that came also in the kit. It couldn't fit in this bag. A little tiny bit of tape. Some gauze. A bandage. Another bandage. Hmm, I'm kind of interested. Is this a large one? I'm going to open it up. Okay, let's open that up. These are all large, uh, you could call them butterfly or knuckle bandages, which really are good to have in the kit. I'm kind of impressed by this. Okay, put it back in this little container here. Nice. What else do we got in here? <coughs> uh, very cheap tweezers, but it might do the job. If you get a splinter, uh, regular bandages, little scissors. Oh man, these are cheap, but maybe they would cut through the gauze. And we have two alcohol pads. Well, maybe more. Let's see here. 
Oh yeah, we have a lot of alcohol pads and a lot of iodine prep. Hmm. That's actually quite generous. And we have another bandage in here. Let's open this one up. Oh, these are really nice big butterfly bandages. Actually, great addition to the kit. Anything? Yeah, still. Okay, and two wound pads. Good idea. And to make a tourniquet. Very little one, but it would work. And that's it in the kit. Would I add anything to this? Yeah, I probably would try to add some of these bandages or bigger ones, and maybe the small container or the uh, small packets you can get of antibiotic cream. But not that bad for inexpensive first aid kit. Navigation, how do you find your way home? Oh, this is part of a tool I'm gonna show you in a minute, but yes, it does have a compass on the end. Then there is a little compass right here on the emergency paracord bracelet and there's a bigger one here do any of them really work i'm not sure i'm not really into navigating um, but it does give you three choices so I even make cordage in a separate category because it can be so important for food procurement for making your shelter even for first aid so for cordage we do have this. It is 16.4 feet of paracord. It doesn't say the weight. And then we also have a paracord bracelet here, and it has 12 feet of 550 paracord. And like all of these, it can easily unwind. Okay, but you know me, I love my bank line. So in this one is 160 pound. Um, this is actually 24 feet of 530 pound bank line. So if I had room, would I include this or maybe include a smaller spool? Defense. Now for defense, we do have a tactical pen, which, oops, on that side. Okay. I don't think it'd be much use to me, but you do have it. And, but it also is a pen and could write. But there's no paper in here, so you might want to include some paper for a note. Then there is a small knife. Let me get that out. And it is a fixed. It's not bad, really. Feels kind of good in the hand. And when we're talking about tools, before we get to the other tool, we also have this axe, which, hey, that might do damage. I would do more with this than I would with this. And then there are whistles. Here's one. Let's try it out. Pretty loud. Okay, let's try the little whistle here on our emergency bracelet. Not too bad, actually. And then, believe it or not, there is one here on the spork. Okay, definitely have your choice of whistles. And then finally, what tools are in the kit? Okay, so we have these. We've already went through the knife, right? And then this is one of those little, you know, survival cards. It has a little saw here, various things. Let's see, let me read what this has. It has a can opener, knife edge, screwdriver, ruler, cap opener, four position wrench for various size nuts and bolt head, butterfly wrench, saw blade, direction ancillary indication, two position wrench, and a lanyard hole, key ring hole. And then it shows you here, okay? Kind of these things I think are more gimmicky, but you never know. Then let's look at this one, okay? Yeah, this is one of the reasons the bag is heavy. Yeah, so got a little safety here of a cap. 
but you got an axe and actually it feels pretty good. We'll test it in a minute. But then on the other side, you got a hammer too. So isn't that great? And maybe you'd want to include some nails in the kit for shelter building. That might be a good idea. And then let's put this on again to be safe. Okay, there we go. Then we have the multi-tool here, which, yeah, let's see. So, okay, kind of a, right, can opener or something you do, a saw, Phillips screwdriver, another knife, a regular screw end and saw. You know, I like the feel of this. It is stainless steel um, and it has a secure locking system and 15 convenient tools, a flat jaw plier, regular pliers, wire cutter, mini hammer, bottle opener, bile, fish descaler, axe, cutting knife, assorted hex wrench, Phillips head screwdriver, serrate knife, wood saw, scaling knife, and a flat screwdriver. Oh, you could break it. Is it amazingly sharp? No. Okay, what's in this one, huh? This was the kind of what makes this really unique, I think. Okay. Got here. So look at that. We've got a shovel, right? This could be very, very handy. It has a little like saw edge right here. Um, but this could be helpful in building a latrine. Uh, Definitely, if you have to shovel snow or ice, I think that's kind of neat. And then what's else neat about it is you can affix this, and this is to actually pull up roots. So, yeah, I think it's fine. Okay, let's see about the root thing here. It does go through the roots. Oops, and I forgot this. It has uh, one of those wire saws, which, yeah, they were all the rage for a while. We'll test it again, see how it goes. Okay, got this far and I am caught. And then something else, which I wasn't sure what category to put it in, but it has a waterproof phone pouch. So we'll test this out too, but I guess that could be good uh, if you are in swampy or rainy conditions. You don't want your phone to get wet. This is also included in the kit. So I have a Kleenex in here. Let's see if this is really watertight. Put something heavy on top. Okay, we'll leave it there a while and see how it does. Let's see? So I opened it up. Let's take our completely dry. So I guess it works. So, do I think this kit is worth it? You know what? I don't think it's too bad. I mean, I spent $32 for it, but now the red version is $40. But you can get the black or the camouflage for only $34. And I got the links down below. But really, for everything you get into it, for that price, I don't think it's bad. And then you can add what you want to the kit. So with some of the additions I mentioned, I think you have an adequate kit to take with you camping, or hiking, or just stick in your car. And you know, for survival, hopefully, there aren't many times that you have to worry about survival. So a lot of this stuff, you might only be using once or twice. Um, and 
the little axe tool I think is well made. Uh, the shovel, well worth in a pinch. Anyway, do I recommend this kit? Yeah, I think I do. I was really, really surprised. I thought, yeah, for that price, come on, it can't be good. But you know what? It's not bad, and it will make a nice Christmas gift. If you'd like to see what I keep in my EDC, look right here.